The makeup of the next Indian government is still unclear, despite Prime Minister Narendra Modi claiming victory in general elections. His Bharatiya Janata Party did win more seats than any other party, but it failed to garner an outright majority for the first time in a decade. It is now in talks with key allies to form a coalition after unexpected gains by the opposition. The BJP won 240 seats. Now, that is below the threshold of 272. All this number is needed to rule on its own. In the last election, the BJP alone won 303 seats. A Congress, meanwhile, nearly doubled its tally from 2019, winning 99 seats in this election. Or its opposition alliance, as the India Alliance, won 232 seats. They are also expected to meet today to discuss a future course of action. Prime Minister Modi and his Council of Ministers have resigned as part of protocol, but will continue in caretaker roles until the new government assumes office. Local media says the next Prime Minister is likely to be sworn in this Saturday. Congratulatory messages are pouring in for Mr Modi and his BJP. China says it's ready to work with its neighbour. All Japan highlighted its support for India as an important partner. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has underscored India's important presence in global affairs. And for more, Nia Pona joins us live from Delhi. Nia, the BJP looking to strengthen its hold on power, power looking to its alliance partners. How do you see this playing out for Mr Modi and the BJP? You know, it's an interesting turn of events because all through the two months that India uh, saw election take place over, Prime Minister Modi in every election rally had told voters that they should not vote for the opposition because it was a, a, a mix of regional rivals who came together to try and defeat him and that a coalition government is not what India needs. So it's interesting that now Mr Modi finds himself in a similar position. Uh, we've seen some uh, hectic developments take place in the last 12 hours or so, Prime Minister Modi, of course, tendering his resignation uh, and also holding that meeting with NDA allies. He is expected to go to the president later this evening to stake claim to government formation. Uh, you know, the, the BJP is known to move quickly when it comes to finalizing processes for, for forming the next government, whether it's at the state or the national level, uh, this time to the BJP not wasting any time. Now, what's interesting is that NDA's allies, the JDU, which is... Um, helmed by Nitish Kumar and the TDP, which is helmed by Chandra Babu Naidu. Now, these two factions will be key to Mr. Modi uh, actually coming back to power for that historic third term, and uh, which is why when he goes to the president later on Wednesday evening, these two allies will accompany him, uh, which is, uh, you know, a mark of importance uh, of, the, of the role that they'll play in the next government that will come uh, to power here in New Delhi. Now, uh, we understand that the allies are making some demands demands uh, of the government, uh, you know, the, the thrust seems to be to want the post of the Speaker in Parliament, which will give them control over how legislations are passed, uh, you know, control over how defections are dealt with. Uh, we don't know whether the BJP has given in to those demands yet. The true nature of government formation, power sharing will only be uh, revealed perhaps later in the week. But, uh, you know, Prime Minister Modi keen to ensure this is all, uh, you know, all the I's are uh, and the T's are uh, dotted and crossed as quickly as possible because he, we understand, is wanting that swearing in ceremony to take place uh, by this Saturday. Ani, of course, uh, the very fact that we are needing to talk about power sharing uh, for the BJP is because the opposition, Congress and it, its alliance, India, has performed better than expected in this election. Now, they have not conceded they are meeting to talk about what they want to do next. What do we know on that front? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, the Congress and its allies have been very clear that this is not a mandate in favour of Prime Minister Modi. It's a mandate that actually goes against him, uh, which is why they've questioned his victory speech and, uh, you know, the quick developments we've seen in the last few hours. But India allies will also be meeting on Wednesday evening, uh, you know, uh, in just a few uh, minutes from now. And their plan is to figure out whether or not they also have a stab at staking claim to forming the next government. Uh, we spoke to a Congress leader earlier 
earlier in the day and he had something interesting to say. He said he thinks that the BJP would make for a better opposition. So that's the sort of confidence they're feeling after Tuesday's results. Uh, they've also not ruled out reaching out to the TDP and to the JDU, which are uh, NDA allies. Uh, these are parties that have in the past been aligned with the opposition bloc as well. And uh, TDP's Chandra Babu Naidu is on record in the past criticized Prime Minister Modi saying he's not a secular leader and he's questioned the crackdown on his rivals by state agencies. So they're playing up those comments uh, as they talk about uh, still having a shot at forming the next government. Uh, but uh, of course, it'll be crucial for whoever uh, says they have the numbers to prove it. So even after Prime Minister Modi, for example, uh, is sworn in, he will have to prove on the floor of the House that he has 272 members of parliament uh, backing him. Congress saying that they're also speaking to independent uh, members of parliament and they're saying, you know, it's it's still too soon to take them out of the race uh, to form the next government. Oh, thanks for that. Nihar Ponya with the very latest developments after India's election, the counting that happened yesterday. Well, India's neighbour Pakistan was drawn into the election campaign at one point with accusations that Pakistan's leaders supported the Congress party. For a close look at the complex, dispute-ridden relationship between the neighbours, let's bring Hira Mustafa in Islamabad. Hira, what has been the reaction in Pakistan at this point, both from the political and the community level, to the outcome of the Indian election? Absolutely, given the fact that a BJP party of Modi couldn't win uh, enough majority to form its own coalition, to form its government, and it relies heavily on the other political parties to form the coalition government. It has surprised many of the experts and politicians here in Pakistan also. Uh, many experts here in Pakistan say that uh, uh, Modi's uh, narrative of polarization has failed uh, and he couldn't uh, please the Indian voters uh, uh, despite the fact that he has put out all its efforts in the uh, political campaign, but he couldn't manage to win the hearts of Indian people. On the other hand, when we talk about the politicians here in Islamabad, uh, they say that it would be too early to comment on the developing situation as uh, it's not clear yet that uh, how would be, uh, what would be the coalition like in government, uh, what would be the coalition government be like in India, uh, because uh, um, it would be too early to predict. Uh, um, however, um, a, uh, however, despite the fact uh, uh, it will improve, uh, the, it, it, it depends heavily on the coalition government in India that how it will uh, improve the diplomatic ties between both Pakistan and India. Uh, also, the people who uh, closely follow the trends on social media say that it's an unexpected uh, outcome and uh, the politics of hatred has cost Moody a losing majority uh, seats in the India. Uh, however, the government uh, has yet to respond on this evolving scenario uh, in the, um, on this developing situation in India.